The Ocean Beach Pier closed again due to damage. The question is, when's it going to reopen? Plus, new information tonight about the remains of two people found in the Anza Borrego Desert. Bringing dignity to their service at Warrior Foundation Freedom Station. The Star of India sets sail this weekend to celebrate her 160th birthday. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts right now. The Ocean Beach Pier is closed again tonight. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. And I'm Anna Laurel in for Marcella Lee. The pier closure comes because of more damage from pounding waves during high surf. CBS 8's Brian White joins us live from Ocean Beach tonight. Brian, people out there love that pier. What are you hearing? Well, Anna, I'm hearing that people want their pier back open. That's what I'm hearing. If you look over here, you see signs that have been put up with attached with duct tape that say open the pier and tell Mayor Todd Glory you want the pier open. Now, it's unclear whether you know what exactly was damaged, whether it was the pilings or a section of railing, but either way, people out here want their pier back open. Pretty sad and disappointing. I don't like it. I love the pier. I love coming to Ocean Beach for the pier. So I would love it if it was open. Locked up and gated off for several weeks now. People around here wish it was open. That is disappointing for a lot of locals because, like I said, people love to come over here and have their coffee or go um, to the cafe and have lunch. San Diego lifeguards tell us they closed the pier on October 20th as a precaution during high surf conditions. While it was closed, it suffered damage. Christopher Jenkins was here. The tide came in. It was a really big high tide that day and destroyed the boards that like the, the railings, support the support beams and stuff. And an update for this all units at the Ocean Beach Pier. It's now a hazard call. This is video from Sunday night when police were called out when about 30 people were on the pier after someone clipped the lock and opened the gate, according to Christopher. They came out and they cleared everyone out because someone had opened up the gate. It's usually what happens. So they, they come out bolt and, cutters up, and so bring some bolt cutters out. up and they cut the gate. The gate was locked up and the pier remained remains closed. I reached out to the city, but so far no word when it will reopen. A little disappointing, but hopefully if it's broken, they can fix it soon. The city is still working to assess the damage and determine how long repairs will take. You know, it's kind of iconic down here. It would be kind of nice to, you know, have something a little bit more permanent or something that's uh, a little bit better for the community that could be open year round. I, I love the pier. I've been here 10 years and like the pier is my walk, you know, so I would I would like to see it reopen, but at the same time, they needed a they need an upgrade. <laughs> now this pier is nearly 60 years old and is due for replacement, so they've been holding community meetings and taking public input on potential alternatives for a new design. Brian, with repairs taking this long, how long is it going to take for the whole pier to get replaced? This can't be quick. <laughs> Uh, obviously, it's going to be uh, several years um, in the making, but um, what, what the city told us is that the preferred design concept is expected to be unveiled to the public early next year, and after that, the project schedule and cost estimate will be prepared, so we're still years away, of course. All right, not, not a great answer there, Brian. Thanks. <laughs> And those Santa Ana winds are making a comeback this week. Along with drier conditions and warmer temperatures, Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis is here with the first look at your microclimate forecast. Carlene, bring on the winds and the bad hair. <laughs> oh, everybody's hair is going to be kind of crazy. <laughs> but here's the thing. This is not going to be a strong wind event for us okay. by any means. The last one that we had was a stronger one. This one's going to be rather weak. And also the impacts look to be towards the north of us. So Southern California as a whole is going to be dealing with them. But we're just going to have some gusts up into the teens, 20s, and even some 30s at times. So when we set the clock in motion, you're seeing some of those gusts picking up by tomorrow. Tomorrow evening, we'll start to have more of an offshore push. So you do have some of those gusts into the 30s, and that's by the afternoon hours, a little bit more pronounced at night. You're even seeing 20 miles per hour by 10 p.m. tomorrow night, and that is for Ramona, as well as 22 miles per hour for Alpine. So as mentioned, this is not going to be a strong wind event for us when it does come to those Santa Ana winds. But they will be picking up and increasing the fire risk north of us. You're seeing that across Riverside County, Orange County as well. And then we start to see a little bit more as we go into Thursday in some spots right along the mountains impacting near the eight. But overall, it's just a moderate risk when it does come to fire weather concerns. We are not looking at anything like LA is when they have a fire weather watch that's going to be in effect starting tomorrow. So we'll go ahead and take a look at your complete forecast coming up. Anna. All right, Carlene, thank you. Trial started today for a man prosecutors say drove drunk and hit and killed a 19 month old girl in City Heights. 
Margarito Vargas is accused in the death of Anna Lee Rodart last year. He faces a second degree murder count. Now his attorney admits her client had been drinking but says he wasn't able to see the toddler as he drove on Redwood Street. She's asking jurors to hold the 47 year old accountable for gross vehicular manslaughter and DUI, but not murder. If convicted, Vargas could face 15 years in life to prison. We're learning more tonight about a former Navy SEAL and a Chinese tourist whose remains were found in the Anza Borrego Desert. The CBS 8's David Gofferson reports the couple's four wheel drive truck was found broken down in a remote area with multiple flat tires. The San Diego Medical Examiner's Office still has not released the identification of two sets of remains found in September and October in the Anza Borrego Desert. A hiker found these skeletal remains on September 17th in Harper Canyon. The Sheriff's Department says they are the remains of 52-year-old John Fitzpatrick, a former Navy SEAL who lived in San Bernardino County. Then on October 28th, the San Diego Sheriff's search and rescue team found more human remains believed to be those of 47-year-old Fang Jin, a Chinese tourist who flew out to meet Fitzpatrick after communicating with him on social media. Attorney David Schmidt has been working on the case with Jin's family. She came here for romantic purposes and her expectation was that he was going to show her around the area, Morongo Valley, Morongo Basin, Joshua Tree State Park. In January, when Jin was still in China, Fitzpatrick texted her these messages saying, I used to live in Borrego Springs in the desert as a kid. Then in June, he texted her, quote, we could start a camping channel taking Chinese out to the desert and I could teach them camping skills from a Navy SEAL how to read maps for hiking and how to find water in the desert, make all different types of shelters. The couple went missing on July 22nd. Fitzpatrick's truck was found abandoned with multiple flat tires in September, a few miles away from where the bodies were found. CBS 8 filed a public records request for the exact location of the truck, but San Diego Sheriff won't release it, citing an ongoing investigation. I've been scouring through satellite images taken in October, but still no luck finding the broken down pickup. I hope that you can, through your efforts, get them to come clean with the public as they should have done a long time ago, especially now that it's apparently reached a conclusion. They need to let the public know what they found and be upfront. A cause of death for the couple also has not been released as their autopsies remain sealed. David Gofferson, CBS 8. An investigation is underway after a fire rips through a historic World War II blimp hangar at the former Tustin Air Base earlier today. The fire so intense, crews were forced to pull back and wait for the landmark to collapse before they could move in to put out the fire. It was reported around 1.30 this morning and the cause is still not known. Now that hangar was built in 1942 and has been featured in television shows and movies, including JAG, The X-Files, Austin Powers, Pearl Harbor, and Star Trek. It's election day, and you still have about two hours to cast your ballot. Yeah, we're watching three major races in the county, including the special election to fill the District 4 county supervisor seat. CBS H Jesse Bagan is here tracking how the day is moving along, Jesse. Yeah, Carlo, Anna, moving along it is. There are 22 voting centers open right now across the county where people are going to cast ballots. We stopped by a few today and talked to some of the people who are turning out. Things are so crazy now that we really need some leaders that will show leadership, you know, and, and really care about what the people are asking them to do. Greg Senoff there went to vote in person in La Mesa today for the San Diego County Supervisor District 4 seat. Former Supervisor and Chair Nathan Fletcher left that seat open when he resigned earlier this year amid sexual assault allegations. Current San Diego City Council member Monica Montgomery Stepp and reopened San Diego founder Amy Reichert came to a tie essentially in the special election for that seat in August. Tonight, people are voting in the runoff between the two. People are also deciding who will be the next Chula Vista City Attorney. Dan Smith, Bart Meisfeld, and Marco Verdugo are in the running. This is the 
seat the city council declared vacant after voters elected longtime deputy city attorney Simon Silva for the post. Silva died after battling cancer but stayed on the ballot by law because of how close the timing was. Meantime, people in Rainbow and Fallbrook are deciding if they want to leave the San Diego County Water Authority and get their water from Riverside County. Um, it's important to be uh, knowledgeable and to, uh, and to vote. If you don't vote, you can't complain too much. No, you can't. People have been telling us it's been a simple voting experience today, albeit a bit quiet at voting centers. That tends to be the case for special elections like these. The San Diego County Registrar of Voters says they've gotten back 100,000 mail-in ballots at this point out of about 600,000 eligible voters. There are 48 drop boxes taking ballots right now on top of the 22 voting centers open. If you have a mail-in ballot, it counts if it's postmarked by today, but at this point in the night at 609, the registrar says if you haven't sent that off, it's better to just go in person. If you're in line at 8 o'clock, you can stay in line and vote tonight. Our Jasmine Ramirez is out and about on the campaign today and tonight on Election Day visiting some of the candidates and some of the parties and watch parties are having. She'll have more on that on the 10 o'clock news and CBS 8 News live at 11. Carlo, Anna. All right, Jesse, thanks. Still ahead tonight. Israeli forces destroying tunnels in Gaza, the latest 30 days into their war with Hamas. Plus, why one of the most popular and profitable online gaming platforms in the world is facing a class action lawsuit. I'm not going to give up. That was a true testament to, like, my heart, my courage, my grit. And up next, the local nonprofit helping our injured veterans heal physically and mentally.